Uh, did you hear about Mick Foley saying he wanted one last match, actually? Yes, so, I, I, I saw something. I think I saw the headline, you yeah. know, something like that, and heard heard a little inside chatter on it. Yeah. Oh, okay. Well, so here's the quote, and he said this on his last episode of Foley's Pod, his podcast. Uh, him and Conrad wrapped up their show, and he said, 60 is right around the corner. Thinking of doing one final match for my 60th birthday, a death match. And he says, I'm not kidding. I think it would be a great incentive to drop those 100 big ones, and I think I, it might be fun. And so there's yeah. a lot of speculation of who he might be facing, from like Matt Cardona to some other people too. And um, very interesting. Uh, man, Rob, uh, what a send-off he would have. At 60 years old, it's been forever since Foley's wrestled. So pretty interesting to kind of think about. Yeah, you know, when, when I saw that, I thought uh, my first thought was, dude, that should be that should be me. Yeah, that would be, that'd be a huge draw because we have never wrestled each other, and we're both, you know, kings of hardcore. Okay. So um, there was a time, there was a time, I believe, when our paths were about to cross, and one of us was chicken shit. <gasps> Unless he's watching this, then no offense. <laughs> if he's watching I'm, I'm just joking if he's not watching the uh if you remember uh in uh, tna the first run when i was there um and hogan and bischoff were the heels and i was working against them abyss was representing them and hogan was for some reason with Abyss out at ringside. That was the night that I busted Abyss's teeth open in his mouth. During all that time, Abyss kept doing all these promos about they. Do you remember that? They, oh, yeah. they was the subject of what he was talking about, and they was whoever was giving him orders. You know, mm -hmm. they told me to do it. They and they and it was always like you know, they were always building up. Well, who is they, right? Yeah, yeah. So a little birdie told me that the idea, or one idea anyway, if not, if not the original idea, was that they was going to end up being Mick Foley, and it was going to set up for a match between RVD and Mick Foley. Oh, shit. And um, I was told that one of us didn't want to do that match. <laughs> 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 yeah. Yeah. Well, but, man. you know, that might have been right after I busted uh, Abyss's teeth, teeth out. <laughs> wow. Honestly, it could have been because I got the impression that that was why was that I was known to be stiff, but... I don't know. Right now, that doesn't seem... I mean, he wrestled Vader. You oh, know? yeah. He's wrestled some real stiff guys. So I don't know. But hmm. for whatever reason, I was told that he that, that he turned it, it down, and then I don't know if they ever did disclose who they was. Yeah, I don't... I can't remember, but I do remember Abyss saying that, actually. So, yeah. wow. Pretty, pretty intriguing. Well, guys, if you would like to see RVD face fully, they may get the word out a little bit. I think that would be a hell of a last match um, to throw down, man. Yeah, it's so weird because you're synonymous with ECW, and Foley was really synonymous with ECW in a lot of ways. So it's pretty crazy to think that you guys never even fucking crossed paths in the match. Yeah, yeah. Well, I didn't say we never crossed paths. You know? yeah. No, I guess, but we did in, 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 in well... The only time I can think of really is in like a battle royal at an indie show in Georgia, Peach State Wrestling, when I was the Cordial City champion. Oh, shit. Uh, there was a battle royal, and man, uh, Mick Foley was in it, Raven was in it. Uh, I I'm pretty sure Van Hammer was in it. Van Hammer, nice. Maybe Steiner. <laughs> there was a <laughs> lot of stars in this fucking. Uh, Disco Inferno. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. There was a lot of stars in this uh, Battle Royal. And, I, and that that might be the only time 
that I that I've actually been in the ring, uh, if we were even in the ring at the same time. But I think we were. It was a battle royal, not Royal Rumble. You know, Damn. Yeah. So we were all in the ring at the same time. But Tony Atlas might or might not have been in that one. But um, but yeah, that match has just never happened. And um, obviously, dude. But why? While, while we're talking about it, little. This is very relevant. Um, when I was in WWE and I won, well, first, before, even before I got to WWE, like when I started watching the product before I got there, I was a little insulted by the hardcore championship because right. I felt like they were kind of making fun of ECW. Right. right. And, 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 and so, you know, no offense to, to crash, but he would do things to make them laugh. You know, they would fight in the 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 the, the pit of balls. You know, for the kids yeah. to play in and knock the taco cart over and fight at weird places. And when I won the uh, WWE Hardcore Championship, I was Rob Van Dam. Just mm-hmm. just kept being me, and and uh, and having great fucking matches. And I loved it because it was just like being an ECW, almost, you know, 80%, maybe 85%, like being an ECW with the difference of having a time limit and a little bit more st- structure, at least in the expectations. You couldn't, you know, go, go down the hallway. Well, anyway... Um, People were loving the matches. Pretty soon, I'm main eventing house shows, what they call the uh, live action shows. Is that what they call them? Live Something. events now they call them. Yeah, live events. Yeah, but um, with the hardcore championship, I'm main eventing because they had at one time A, B, and C shows. They had so much talent spread out with the invasion and and this influx of talent from WCW and ECW. And so I would be main eventing, and that was not the plan for the Hardcore Championship. They didn't want it to mean that much, and I was making it mean a lot, just like when I was in ECW, I made the TV championship mean as much as the heavyweight championship in ECW. And it was my goal to keep doing that and to build those up separately. And then one day, of course, wrestle. And I was hoping it would be Mike Awesome, the ECW heavyweight champion, as a television champion, which would have had just as much momentum or more. It held just as much weight prospectively. I was doing that with the hardcore title. If, if, If anybody doesn't know my perspective on it, that's what I was doing. And I was fucking loving it. And then... It meant too much. So that wasn't their plan. So what do they do? They retire it. They retire the fucking championship while I'm wearing it, while I'm having these kick-ass matches. Me and Tommy Dreamer had a match, I think, to retire it. And I, if I remember right, but it was also unifying it with the... Yeah, the, unif- with the Intercontinental. It was with the Intercontinental. And in the, anyway, did they give me the hardcore title? Do I get? Do I have that hanging in my Rob Van Dam room of outstanding fucking accomplishments and memorabilia? No. You know who has that hardcore championship? Is it Mick? Mick Foley. Well, how about that? They gave it to him for whatever he did with it before I got there. So, it, deep inside, there's a little bit of resentment on my behalf. Not resentment, but I would like to have it. You would like to have it. And Rob, <laughs> I mean, you fucking retired it. Not resentment, jealousy, maybe. Well, I mean, hey, let's uh, let's get that belt a little out there again. Uh, see what happens. See what happens, guys. Fun story. 